Hi, I'm Bryn Zolte. I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist. I'm Becca Ironside, and I'm also a pelvic floor physical therapist. Together, we've developed a program targeting men going through prostate cancer treatment. I'll be focusing on urinary leakage. And I'll be focusing on erectile dysfunction. We hope you enjoy this series of short videos. They will help you see the role that a pelvic floor physical therapist can play after a diagnosis of prostate cancer. Hi, I'm Becca Ironside. I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist and my good friend Bryn Zolte just did a fantastic job explaining the implications of urinary incontinence following treatment of prostate cancer. So the second thing that we want to talk about is erectile dysfunction, which is often linked to treatments that are used to target prostate cancer. So a lot of people might be asking, where are the pelvic floor muscles and what do they look like in men? This is a really clear representation of where they are and what they do. So the purpose of these muscles here, as you can see, one of them wraps around the penis and assists in hoisting it up into the erect position. And the surrounding muscles are there because once blood is forced into the testicles and the penis, it needs to remain there. It is those surrounding muscles that keep the blood inside this area and allow for a nice turgid erection. All right, so what do we need for good pelvic floor control? We need good nerve supply, but we also need the muscles to respond to the nerve's command. What happens after removal of the prostate, also known as a prostatectomy, is that even when the nerves that allow an erection to take place are spared, these nerves are very shy and they really don't like to be fiddled with. So even under the glaring lights of the uh, surgeon's, you know, operating room, or even just touching the surrounding tissues with the scalpel will cause these nerves to go into a little bit of a retraction and they won't want to fire as well as they once did. Luckily for the men who receive the prostate removal with the nerve sparing is that these nerves have the potential to regrow and rebound to their, their past glory. So what would we want to tell a man before he goes in for either a prostate removal or radiation for prostate cancer. We'd want to tell this man to come to physical therapy for the pelvic floor at least a couple of times so that he gets in touch with these muscles and knows what they're doing. But the other thing we would ask this gentleman is to attempt sex, erections, ejaculation, whether that be manual or with a partner, at least three times a week. We want to keep these tissues working well to prepare them for what's going to happen with this treatment of prostate cancer. So following your treatment for prostate cancer, which is either going to be surgery to remove the prostate or it's going to be radiation in several different forms, what we're going to recommend to get you back to erectile function is we want you to attempt sex when you are cleared by your physician. Now, a lot of men are terrified of this because they feel that they're going to leak urine out of the tip of their penis. And this is extremely common and normal. If you're at all concerned about it, you can simply wear a condom, which will contain the urine during the sexual act. If you do not want to engage in sex with a partner, though it is highly recommended, we still recommend solo manual stimulation. And what's the reason why? We want to promote blood flow. If we don't do that, how are these tissues ever going to remember what having a normal erection is like? So what are the methods that we can use to get more blood flow in the area and restore this male to his previous sexual function? Number one is a class of pharmaceuticals known as PDE5 medications, and they include Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra. So these are medications that are going to improve blood flow to the perineum, to the testicles, and to the penis. Now, remember when we talked about the pelvic floor muscles and how they assist the penis in getting hard and erect, and they prevent the blood from leaving the penis? Well, after prostate surgery, which is a prostatectomy, or radiation to the area, those muscles are not working in the same fashion. So how do we achieve the rigid erection and keep the blood from leaving the area? This is a very simple technique and you can utilize a penis ring. So these come in many different forms. These are the simplest. These could go around the base of the penis. And again, it's going to allow the blood to get into the penis, but not escape out because we don't want that. Here's another model of one. 
So you could use one compartment for the penis, the other for the testicles. Really nice and simple. And finally, and this is a very popular one, I was surprised to discover, this involves a cinch mechanism. So you could put the penis or the testicles in the one, tighten around it to whatever feels right for you. Or you could put the penis in the top portion and the testicles in the bottom. Okay, so very simple mechanism for allowing the erection to do what it must, to allow you to achieve that sensation of erection once more. Next, we're going to talk about penile pumps. So these are a vacuum suction type mechanism. And what they're going to do is elongate the tissues of the penis. They're, they're extremely safe. There's many of them on the market. Um, and they range from very inexpensive to very expensive. The bottom line is you want to be able to get some suctioning and lengthening into your penis. You can do that with your hands, but this is a simpler mechanism. It would be to use this penis pump and to use it several times weekly. Now note this, when a man has a traditional erection, there are red blood cells in the blood that are going into his penis and testicles. So that makes for a very pink, firm erection. This suction, this penile pump, this is a very different mechanism of, a, of erection. So what we're pulling into the penis is pay, uh, blood from the venous system. So there are a dearth of red blood cells in this blood. However, the penile pump will still serve the purpose of elongating the tissues, keeping the penis nice and elastic so that when sexual function returns, the tissues can respond in kind and it won't be hard and fibrotic. Finally, there's um, a wonderful, wonderful new technology out there. It's been around for women for a while and now you men can enjoy it as well. There it's called vibrators. In other words, guybraiders. So there's many different types of guybraiders out of the market. Some wrap around the base of the penis. Others uh, resemble this, only they're a little larger. And inside is a vibratory mechanism. Now there's not a lot of research that suggests that vibration is going to really improve sexual function, but what is it going to do? It's going to bring blood flow back to the area and it's going to keep the tissues moving. And that is the goal of all of these things that we've just discussed. You have to use these tissues. If not, you're setting yourself up for never returning to erectile function. So our final suggestion for what to do after prostate cancer treatment would be to come to pelvic floor physical therapy. That's the purpose in making this video in the first place, so that you can learn how to isolate your pelvic floor muscles. These are the muscles that are responsible for erection and ejaculation. In a study performed in 2004 by Dory, 40% of men who underwent pelvic floor physical therapy demonstrated an improved sexual response to almost prior to what they had been pre-surgery or treatment. Keep in mind, if you've had treatment for prostate cancer, your erections and ejaculation, it may not be the same as it once was, and that's perfectly okay. When you're in the healing process, you wanna aim for ejaculation. You might not have a full erection, and that's perfectly okay. Also, if you experience pain at any moment during the, this rehabilitative process, stop, return to your urologist and get clearance before returning. Your body might simply not be ready for these techniques. Uh, there is a two year window for recovery and that's extremely exciting. So what that tells us as practitioners is to tell you as people to get into physical therapy clinics as soon as you're diagnosed. Come to us, let's see what we can do prior to your treatment. Then after your treatment, we can do even more. We were able to get a really nice explanation of why urinary leakage and incontinence occurs following treatment for prostate cancer. And now you're learning about how pelvic floor physical therapy can help with erectile dysfunction. So the takeaway message is come and find a pelvic floor physical therapist before diagnosis and thereafter so that we can help you with both of these issues. We want to let you know that prostate cancer is the second most commonly diagnosed cancer in the United States. One in three men will typically acquire this disease at some point in their lives. You are not alone. You are surrounded by so many other men who are going through exactly the same thing. They feel they have nowhere to turn, but they do. So find pelvic floor physical therapy, try these other techniques that we've discussed, 
reach out to people, find a urologist that you trust, talk to people, talk to your partners, talk to your friends, open up about it. If you liked this video and you'd like to see more just like it, you can log on to connectpt.org. Thanks so much.